Okay, so let's look at some special properties here. We have a couple of special quads uh, besides parallelograms. The first one we're going to look at is a rectangle. So from parallelogram, from parallelogram, we can have two different offshoots here. We can have a rectangle and we can have my favorite shirt ever, the rhombus. Okay, so we have the rectangle and we have the rhombus. Those are the two. Hi, honey. My four-year-old's giving me a hug. Thank you, sweetie. I gotta, I gotta finish this, baby. Go lay down. So these are your special characteristics. Now, rectangles. Don't get in the light, honey. Rectangles have all the characteristics of the parallelogram, except for they add a couple of special ones. Number one, four right angles. In a rectangle, a rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. Number two, the diagonals are congruent. Now, what does that mean? Well, since it's a rectangle, it's become symmetrical, right? Hey, don't do that, please. Stop. Or you're going to go back to bed. Now lay down. So what happens is if I draw this diagonal and I draw this diagonal, since it's a parallelogram, they cut each other in half, right? But since it's a rectangle, they're actually going to be congruent to each other. So if this is 7, and that's, that means that has to be 7 because it's a parallelogram. They cut each other in half. They bisect. Well, that means this one has to be 7 and so does this one. So in a rectangle, the diagonals are actually congruent to each other. So a rectangle has all the characteristics of a parallelogram plus the four right angles and the diagonals are congruent. Now remember, parallelogram, you're still going to have, what are these? Alternate interiors. You have alternate interiors all over the place here. You have them there. You've got alternate interior angles here, just like a parallelogram. But the difference in a rectangle is you've got four right angles and the diagonals are congruent. Okay, let's look at the rhombus. The rhombus is a parallelogram which has the following characteristics. Number one, four congruent sides. All of the sides are the same in the rhombus. They're all the same every single one of them. So when you do the distance formula, when we're doing coordinate geometry, you would get all four links identical in the rhombus. The rhombus also has two other special characteristics that not all other parallelograms have. Number one, the diagonals are perpendicular. So if I were to draw the diagonals here in a rhombus, and I draw them like this, they are going to make a right angle, four right angles. So in a rhombus, you've got four right angles, okay? So there are four right angles created by the diagonals. Now, there's another portion. The diagonals actually bisect the angles, the corner angles. So what I say, what I mean by bisect is, this one and this one are going to be exactly the same. That one and that one are going to be exactly the same. That one and that one are the same. That one and that one are the same. It actually cuts the angles in half. That doesn't happen in a rectangle. It doesn't happen in a generic parallelogram. It only happens in a rhombus. Okay? So now let's look at the special, which is the baby of the rectangle and the rhombus. And if the re re that rectangle and the rhombus got together and had a baby, it would be a square. Because what does a square have? It has the four right angles from the rectangle, and it has the four congruent sides from the rhombus, which also means it has all of this, and it has all of this. The square is the one that has all of the properties. It has all the parallelogram properties, it has all of the rectangle properties, and it has all of the rhombus properties. So, <clears throat> in a square, the diagonals are going to be congruent. 
right? Just like the rectangle. It's got four right angles, just like the rectangle. It's got four congruent sides, just like the rhombus. It's got perpendicular diagonals, just like the rhombus. And the diagonals cut the angles into 45s. Cut them in half, just like the rhombus. So those are the special characteristics. So let's look down here and do one or two examples. If I tell you that you've got RSTU, because I'm just so original with my letters. If I give you RSTU, and I tell you that RSTU is a rectangle, by telling you it's a rectangle, I mean it has all the par parallelogram characteristics. How do I find the measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 2? Also, let's make it RV. Let's say RV is 20 meters. And I want to know what US is equal to. So let's look at this. First of all, let's look at the angles. Since it's a rectangle, it's a parallelogram, which means what do we have? Alternate interior. So what's the measure of angle 2? 40 degrees. Now how do I find angle 1? Well, since it's a rectangle, what kind of angles do I have in every corner? 90. So I know the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is going to give me 90. So I'm just going to do 90 minus 40. So that tells me that angle 1 is 50. Okay. Now how do I find US? US is a diagonal. Since it's a rectangle, what do you know about the diagonals? They're congruent, right? Well, if this piece is 20 meters, that means this piece also is 20 meters because they cut each other in half, right? So RT is 40. So what would US equal? 40. Because the diagonals are congruent. And that's how you can apply the properties of a rectangle. So let's do one more and let's do a rhombus. Okay. So, if I tell you that ABCD, again, I'm really, really unique here with the lettering. If I tell you it is a rhombus, that means it has all the characteristics of a parallelogram, plus four congruent sides, diagonals are perpendicular, and they bisect the angles. So I'm going to do this, and I'm going to say this is 15 meters. X and Y, and I'm going to say this is 30 degrees here, and I'm going to say, let's see, let's get creative here. Let's say this is 40, and I want to find angle 1, angle 2, and angle 3. So we'll find the measure of angle 1, the measure of angle 2, and the measure of angle 3, as well as X and why. So I know it's a rhombus, so again, I know that these are 90, and I know it does what to the corners? Cuts them in half, and I know all four sides are the same. So it should be pretty easy for me on the first one. What are x and y going to equal? Well, if this is 15 meters and it's a rhombus, what does that mean all the way around? x is 15 meters, and so is y. They're all the same length, right? Every one of these is 15 meters because it's a rhombus. Okay, so let's look and examine here. How do I find angle 1? Well, it's a parallelogram, so I've got alternate interior angles. So if this is 40, angle 1 is also 40. Okay, so I'm using alternate interiors. How about angle 2 and angle 3? Well, what do you know about a rhombus? The diagonals cut the angles in half, right? So if that's 40 in a rhombus, that's 40 as well, right? And that's 40 as well, right? Well, I have a triangle here. What is a triangle? What does a triangle add up to? 180. So 30 plus 40 plus angle 2 is 180. Because I know that 30 and 40 and angle 2 are going to make a triangle. So that's, if I solve this out, 180 minus 70, x is 110 degrees. Sorry. Measure of angle 2 is 110 degrees. Now, tell me what's wrong with that. What should angle 2 and angle 3 equal? 90. 
they should both be 90 degrees. So that means that what I probably should have had right here is had this angle be 50 degrees. Okay. That has to be 50 degrees because those two angles have to be 90. Because it's a rhombus, they're perpendicular. So I should have made that a 50 because otherwise this doesn't work, right? So that's how you know if you've got the right numbers. Two and three, you should have immediately said easy, 90 degrees. Diagonals are perpendicular because it's a rhombus. Okay.